Hundreds of residents in Brighton Park marched against that planned tent camp to house migrants in their neighborhood. Temporary shelter and then go through that process and if there are beds that are available, then they certainly will be considered. We'll invest an additional $160 million via the Department of Human Services. Johnson seems to be holding out hope that the federal government will come through with additional funding, but political observers say that's not very likely. Officials with the Homeland Security and State Department say they have seen a sharp drop in migrant crossings at the southern border. Brighton Park residents protest. Hundreds of people demonstrated and marched through Bright Park against the proposed construction of a base camp for migrants from Chicago. For weeks, residents of the southwest side have been protesting the migrant base camp, and they have declared that they will not stop until the city presents them with a comprehensive plan that takes into account all of their safety concerns. Work crews continue despite the city's insistence that the Brighton Park lot they are leasing is still undergoing an environmental study but there was no construction being done. Hundreds of residents in Brighton Park marched against that planned tent camp to house migrants in their neighborhood. To loudly voice their opposition to a proposed migrant tent base camp location during a protest at 9 this morning. Their community groups, activists and labor unions joined together calling for solidarity and support for migrants. When it comes to the total number of people at South Shore at any given point in time, it is fluid. Residents who live in the area not happy about these plans, hundreds taking to the street today to protest. The resistance has been unrelenting. To stop the construction of the winterized tent camp, Brighton Park locals have organized protests virtually every day. We are all concerned about our neighborhood because it isn't like other places where I know there are immigrants. However, there are only 200 or 300 people there, and now they're talking about how suddenly there will be a few thousand here, remarked resident Ada Chen. You intend to provide them with public funds? This You haven't come out and helped us like you're helping these people, even though we're homeless here in the U.S., protester Linda Norris yelled. The land is across the street from Ricardo Palacios' residence. Dollars that they're going to give to these people when they could have spent it on our school, on our education for our kids, on our senior citizens for the community, Palacios stated. They're spending it negligently. Residents say they didn't get to voice their opinions before the city signed a lease on the land there. I don't think that these people are going to come and stay there. It does not constitute an emergency for the South Shore community. It doesn't seem fair to us. So today we are here to let them know that we have a strong opinion. Today, Hundreds marched to Alderman Julio Ramirez's office from the proposed camp seeking answers. Veterans Day was observed on November 11, but that didn't stop the locals from leaving notes for her window to let her know they were there. Look for a better way to help us. We all owe it to one another. However, we require an improved outcome, protester Robert Sylvester stated. We were duped by our mayor and alderwoman. We were never informed of what was going on, Suddenly, they enter and begin working on a construction project. Additionally, this would have been resolved long ago if we hadn't been arguing, resident Ricardo Palacio stated. In the meanwhile, the city has bought a second parcel close to 115th and Halstead Streets, and construction is anticipated to begin shortly. I felt that the people of Chicago should be taken care of first before migrants come into Chicago, stated Gibbons. That's why our movement is for repealing the Sanctuary City Ordinance. Dozens of people rallied in Chicago today for a solution to the city's migrant crisis. The city has signed a deal to lease this vacant lot here in Brighton Park. The privately owned and vacant lot is at 38th in California, and over 1,000 migrants could be moved there. <laughs> This isn't the first time there's been fierce opposition to the city's desire to build winterized base camps in different parts of Chicago. The mayor stated that his goal is to build additional houses for recent immigrants before the weather becomes too cold. More than 2,500 asylum seekers were camped out in Chicago airports and police stations. The city stated, the commitments from the Johnson administration are expansive. A base camp deadline, community contracts, capital improvements, support for housing, health and safety, 
and breaking ground on Morgan Park Commons in 2024. The statement acknowledged plans to transform the Morgan Park lot into an affordable housing complex the following year. Migrant Shelter Expansion Pause The influx of migrants that is taxing city resources also seems to be putting a strain on Chicago's relationship with the state, as Mayor Brandon Johnson's proposal to suspend expanding shelter space was attacked by Governor J.B. Pritzker. The mayor responded by implying that Illinois should be doing more. Pritzker expressed his deep concern that Chicago will not increase the number of beds because the influx of about 35,000 asylum seekers into the city since August 2022 doesn't appear to be slowing down. In the city of Chicago, we do not have enough shelter, Pritzker remarked during a separate press conference. We must ensure that contrary to what the city is now planning, we are not terminating shelter capacity at the end of winter. It's not true that this issue will go away when the weather gets warmer. People still need places to live. When specifically asked whether the state will provide more cash for Chicago, Pritzker did not provide more state money for the shelter's growth. Instead, he emphasized the need for the legislature to reimburse millions that had already been spent. Johnson spokesman Ronnie Reese said in a statement that Pritzker could use his power as the state's top executive to exert pressure if he was truly worried. Chicago is one of the 1,300 municipalities that make up the state of Illinois. Reese stated, the state has the right to establish, fund, and run a shelter in any of those communities at any time, including the city of Chicago. Almost all asylum seekers dispatched to Illinois have been taken in by the city of Chicago, which has taken on the full burden of the new arrival mission thus far. But we're still dedicated to seeing to it that asylum seekers are taken care of while also carrying out our fiduciary duties to the citizens of Chicago. According to a Pritzker official, Illinois has assumed duties such as providing wraparound services, covering the cost of meals in shelters for six months, and giving Chicago the lion's share of grant cash. The official remarked, it is absurd that they are handling everything alone. Additionally, the official refuted the claim that the state has the right to erect a shelter anywhere it pleases. About 200 people were waiting for a shelter bed in Chicago due to the cold weather advisories that were in force. According to a contentious joint city-state plan that stipulates that refugees will be kicked out of shelters after 60 days, shelter space opened on February 1. Due to snowstorms and below freezing weather, the evictions have been postponed twice. But, based on city data, approximately 3,000 migrants may be forced from shelters in the first few days after the policy goes into effect. Temporary shelter, and then go through that process, and if there are beds that are available, then they certainly will be considered. These are not illegal people. The moment they step ground on American soil, migrant crisis, this international global crisis, really requires a federal resource response. We're not evicting new arrivals um, out, out in the cold this winter. Uh, our mission is to continue to live up to our values. But the, the main goal, of course, is to move with expedition people onto um, a life of sustainability. Open shelter beds aren't anticipated to remain vacant for very long, though, as additional Latin American migrants are bussed into Chicago from Texas. It's unclear, though, whether those people and their families will have a place to go. It is anticipated that Republican Governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, who is deliberately bringing migrants to Chicago, will step up his efforts in the run-up to the Democratic National Convention in August, which is being hosted by Chicago. Although the Sun-Times reported in mid-January that the Johnson administration was going to right-size its shelter capacity due to limited funding, the term right size may actually mean reducing capacity rather than simply standing pat. You know, this is a global crisis. Um, you know, the policies that are impacting are going to continue to cause the type of chaos that the governor of Texas wants to do. But we're I've, running out of space. So where are these people going to go? In the event the deadline does come, people will have an opportunity um, to, to re-enter into the shelter system. Well, as far as the landing zone is concerned, um, no, no, it was never designed to be a shelter. They are not seeing, it seems like this money just appears out of thin air, but isn't being invested in their own communities. Why do you think they feel that way? WTTW News reported that city officials have no plans to open new shelters 
or to add beds to the 28 existing shelters. It appears that the Johnson administration decided to stop expanding capacity as early as late December. Alder persons were told of the idea and were issued a memo, according to the Politico Illinois newsletter. As of 12-22-23, the city does not plan to add shelter beds and will fill beds as residents exit, the memo stated. The governor also took issue with the city's lack of transparency with his administration over its goals and requirements. We can't help if they don't identify those locations because the city hasn't started where they would like us to put our resources to build new shelters or help them build new shelters, he said. Johnson's suggestion to establish a winterized base camp in Brighton Park was abandoned by Pritzker in early December, even though work had already started on it. After a city that had been used for industrial purposes for decades, the environmental evaluation revealed serious environmental concerns, which the governor cited. The $150 million allotted by Chicago's budget to care for migrants is, as Johnson candidly stated, less than what officials anticipate spending this year. In contrast, Illinois taxpayers spent at least $648 million responding to the asylum seeker crisis. Of that amount, $160 million was announced in November and allocated for shelters, caseworkers, support, and an intake center in Chicago, which state officials say will be finished this month. With space for 220 individuals, the first state-funded shelter opened on January 11 on a former CVS property in Little Village. Pritzker withheld the $160 million from the Illinois Department of Human Services' current budget, expressing his expectation that lawmakers will approve a motion to replenish the funding. Regarding that financing pool, Pritzker stated, We've already made a decision at the state level that we are investing in taking care of the people who are arriving in this humanitarian crisis. In addition to cutting the amount of rental aid the state will offer to migrants once they leave shelters in half, from six to three months, Pritzker announced the $160 million infusion. We'll invest an additional $160 million via the Department of Human Services. Uh, let me uh, answer your question by saying that, you know, we were very clear in our communication with the White House. Well, the city's been operating its own methodology process, right? And it hasn't moved fast enough. Uh, what we need is logistical support, that is help uh, deciding where these folks ought to go. We've done a complete data analysis of everything that's happened really for the last 14 months. The Illinois General Assembly reconvened, but it is unclear when the lawmakers would have a chance to vote on that proposal. With so many other issues that may use funding, Lawmakers are reluctant to take up a standalone budget bill for immigrants, so this vote is likely to be challenging. Johnson was scheduled to meet with mayors from the neighboring metropolitan region, where immigrants were relocated following a local rule that punished and cited bus companies for dropping off passengers outside of designated hours. Since then, a small number of suburbs have enacted legislation aiming to limit migrant drop-offs. The governor stated that the General Assembly is thinking about how to adopt a coordinated approach once the legislative session gets going, but he gave no hint as to what that would be. Wind Transportation, a bus business based in Texas, claims that Chicago's sanctions violate the Interstate Commerce Clause in an unlawful manner. The governor and the mayor have persisted in urging Biden and Congress to take decisive action in handling the situation. They have suggested appointing a national point person to help coordinate the handling of migrants once they cross the border and increasing funding to the states that are most affected by the influx. Taxpayer money spent on asylum seekers An in-depth examination of how New York City is using tax dollars to fund emergency shelters for asylum seekers is being conducted by Eyewitness News 7 on your side investigates. According to local officials, there are about 90 emergency shelters for migrants in the city. The contracts that Eyewitness News was able to get range in value from $6 million to $23 million to $237 million, with provisions for supplies and staff. The supplies available at the shelters included flashlights, bullhorns, and walkie-talkies. Additionally, funding was set aside for CPR and training on active shooters. With the exception of food, Eyewitness News discovered that computer license applications, servers, cell phones, and PCs were the most expensive. 
Staff members at the shelter are required by contract to assist residents in managing their income and saving money for permanent accommodation. Every two weeks, staff members at one of the shelters are mandated to meet with residents to work on their individual living plans or ILPs. Eyewitness News discovered that one shelter staff is rewarding good behavior among the migrants with tokens. According to the terms of the contract, residents receive points for specific tasks, accomplishments, or behaviors, and points are deducted for actions that violate shelter rules. Residents can exchange their points for goods from the token economy store after they've acquired enough of them. 34,800 asylum seekers were reportedly under the city's care as of April 19, according to the city. According to the city, housing and feeding one migrant family costs $380 per day. In testimony given recently to the New York City Council on Immigration, New York City Comptroller Brad Lander stated that the city plans to spend $2 billion on immigrants this year, with food and shelter accounting for 99% of the total expenditure. We urgently need to turn our focus on helping people get out of shelter, he stated. Johnson seems to be holding out hope that the federal government will come through with additional funding, but political observers say that's not very likely. To follow the money, hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayer money spent on the city's migrant crisis. But there's much more at stake for the mayor with the question about will the city commit to paying for care? The humanitarian crisis all tied to immigration. Migrants coming here to the city is unfolding on city streets. The city has already housed nearly 96,000 migrants and more buses are expected to arrive over the next few days. Lander told the committee that in order to help migrants leave the shelters, the city should allocate an extra 50 to 100 million dollars. This money would aid with their asylum seeker applications and work permit applications. Every family that we can help get out of shelter we are saving money in the long term, he stated. Robert Holden, a Democratic councilman from Maspeth, stated that the city needs to find quick fixes or else the expenditures will fall primarily on middle-class taxpayers in New York City. We know that our taxes are going to go up to pay for this, he stated. Holden wants to see the city implement a scheme that would be comparable to the Works Progress Administration, which was established in the wake of the Great Depression and paid jobless people to work. Holden did concede, though, that changes to federal rules would be necessary to enable immigrants to receive work authorizations more quickly than they already can. Mayor Eric Adams was in Washington, D.C., pleading once more for financial support from the federal government. He warned that the migrant problem is destroying the city when he appeared earlier in the day in Washington, D.C., at the African American Mayors Association conference. In response to Adams' remark, Mural Awadwe, executive director of the New York Immigration Coalition, stated, It is long past time that Mayor Adams stopped treating people seeking safety as a crisis and started investing in an infrastructure of permanent housing, legal representation, and social service supports that will allow asylum seekers and all New Yorkers to build their lives here. Rising Frustration At a five-hour committee meeting, Chicago City Council members let loose with their ire and irritation as the spotlight was turned on the growing humanitarian issue brought on by the influx of thousands of migrants sent to Chicago from the southern border of the nation. Officials with the Homeland Security and State Department say they have seen a sharp drop in migrant crossings at the southern border. Dozens of people rallied in Chicago today for a solution to the city's migrant crisis. In Congress and across the country, blame the Biden administration for this spike in illegal border crossings. I don't feel safe having adult males with no health screenings, no criminal background checks around, around our children. Tens of thousands of migrants continue to be bused from the southern border to Chicago, and the Illinois governor has had enough. In the last 13 months, over 15,000 people have arrived in Chicago. Many of them are refugees from the crime and economic devastation that have befallen Venezuela. This has increased the pressure on the city's social safety net, widened the budget deficit, and heightened hostilities between Chicago's Latino and black communities. According to local figures, almost 9,300 people are occupying every available space in 21 city shelters. According to official data, there are now 2,300 more men, women, and kids sleeping on the floors of police stations throughout the city, as well as at O'Hare and Midway airports. 
a 25% rise in only the last seven days. Following their requests for asylum, more than 30 buses transporting 40 to 50 lawful migrants have arrived in Chicago in the last week, according to Beatrice Ponce de Leon, Deputy Mayor for Immigrant, Migrant and Refugee Rights. The sole consensus among city officials was that there were insufficient choices for housing, feeding and caring for the migrants as the impending winter season approached. No one anticipates buses carrying migrants, funded by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, to cease arriving anytime soon. The chair of the City Council's Immigration and Refugee Rights Committee, Alderman Andre Vasquez, began the lengthy discussion by criticizing Mayor Brandon Johnson's plan to relocate the thousands of migrants currently residing in police stations and airports into huge winterized tents. Vasquez expressed his sadness at the prospect that this administration may soon begin erecting military-style tent base camps in his magnificent city. Migrants are still without homes. They are sleeping at the airport in some cases outside of Chicago Police Department's goal to learn about how the Johnson administration plans to govern the city in the middle of a migrant crisis. Told me he's not sure where he's going, but that he and three of his children will have to be out of here. And on Tuesday, the mayor is holding a meeting with municipal leaders from cities and villages across the Chicago area. Staying in city shelters will be evicted today. However, the city says it hopes to have more than 2,000 migrants out of shelters. Johnson's first deputy chief of staff, Christina Pachion Zayas, and Ponce de Leon supported the president's choice, arguing that it was the best and only one the city could have given the dearth of readily available existing structures that could be swiftly transformed into shelters. For the past week, Johnson has been the target of increasing criticism for his choice to work with the state of Illinois and agree to pay Aegis Defense Services doing business as Garda World Federal Services, $29 million to erect the tents that will house the migrants who are currently being forced to sleep on the floors of the city's airports and police stations. According to the Tampa Bay Times, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis employed that company to transfer immigrants to states run by Democrats. According to Pasión Zayas, people that arrive in the city won't be forced to dwell in subpar conditions because the winterized tents would center the dignity of the migrants. She also stated that the city will keep looking for existing structures that may be used as shelters for refugees. Alderman Jeanette Taylor expressed dissatisfaction with the response, stating that she could understand why a few black citizens continually interrupted the meeting. They were incensed over the amount of money the city was spending on migrant care. These people shouldn't be living in these tents, Taylor stated. It is wrong before going on to become the first of many aldermen to beg their colleagues to put aside their differences and concentrate on helping the migrants, many of whom arrive in Chicago traumatized, ill, and hungry. Calling on her colleagues to combat white supremacy, Taylor remarked, what y'all doing is you're going to start a race war. Taylor, Johnson's close ally and the chair of the Education Committee, attacked former Mayor Lori Lightfoot for her decision to open a refuge for migrants in a Chicago public schools building that had been closed. Woodlawn is a neighborhood where the majority of people are black and where a lack of investment has plagued the area for decades. Taylor said, stop putting them in our community. According to updated financial forecasts presented by Pasión Zayas, the migrant problem is expected to cost taxpayers $345 million by the end of the year. The fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. The migrants, with Chicago bearing the responsibility for providing shelter, the county covers health care and the state provides the wraparound. See that everybody that comes into any of our shelters has had a background check that we can look at reliably. I think that Mayor Brandon Johnson seems to want to hold a moral high ground, that he is absolutely entitled. And we did all of that without having to cut back on services to people, as I've already expressed. Alderman Pat Dowell stated that the city required a fresh method to address it. Based on city figures, the expenses were estimated to be $302 million three weeks ago. The expense of providing care for the migrants transported to Chicago is expected to account for almost $200 million of the city's anticipated $538 million budget deficit in 2024, according to officials. Dowell, the chair of Johnson's hand-selected finance committee, 
cautioned that each new bus is eating away at the goodwill of the people of the city of Chicago and urged the mayor to prioritize the needs of black Chicagoans. The imbalances we observe in our communities, particularly those that have been marginalized, are exposed by this crisis, Dowell stated. Johnson's tent proposal has also drawn criticism from Governor J.B. Pritzker, who told reporters that it would be preferable to put the migrants in underutilized government buildings, as opposed to up to 1,000 people in a single enormous tent. I believe that there is nobody more committed to this mission than Mayor Brandon Johnson, but of course the money is really where... Is the bus situation acceptable? Is that acceptable? Well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a temporary... I mean, look, it's a good question. A slap in the face to, to immigrants who have worked hard their entire lives to get here, who have raised their children. And perhaps he felt as though if he made this kind of a commitment to migrants that it would there would be a lot of backlash. Um, it's not just as simple as here's a building, take it. There's, there's work that has to be done. Pritzker stated, I voiced my concerns about it and we continue to have conversations about it. I don't think this is the only option but I think the city has looked at it as one of its options, given the lack of existing buildings to put people in. Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa criticized those remarks on X. He also blasted the state's most prominent Democrat on the record for not opening and running migrant shelters on the city council chamber floor. Ramirez Rosa remarked, That is dishonorable because we are a welcoming state. The city of Chicago is currently being failed by the state of Illinois. The governor's press secretary, Jordan Abudaye, made remarks that municipal officials turned down a state offer to set up a shelter in a little village CVS pharmacy. Ramirez Rosa referred to this as a bold-faced lie. According to Pasión Zayas, local officials enthusiastically welcomed the state's offer to establish a shelter there, but it was put on hold when the Lightfoot administration gave way to the Johnson administration, and there were concerns raised about who owned the land. The governor and the mayor, who had previously acted in unison, are becoming more and more disenchanted with each other. This is because many progressive supporters of Johnson and his allies are upset that he would collaborate with a company that assisted a Republican politician in the transportation of migrants to states and cities ruled by Democrats in an attempt to undermine President Joe Biden's chances of winning re-election. Ramirez Rosa, the mayor's floor leader, remarked, and I know our mayor he is the nicest person. I understand why our mayor hasn't confronted the governor in person. However, I will. 27 shelters is what I've, what I've built. And they're all We're, full. And, and, and we have provided education, health care. You know, that is easier said than done, given that um, a lot of these migrants, they don't have work permits. They um, don't have a path to self-sufficiency. What you're seeing here in this street, we've done everything possible. The federal government is responsible for what you're seeing here tonight. First round of migrant shelter evictions will take place today with about 35 people due to the outgrowing. All that Chicago has done for this population, but we need to continue to see his actions and money. Olivia Kuniko, Pritzker's senior deputy press secretary, announced on social media during Ramirez Rosa's speech that the state had given the city of Chicago $330 million to care for the refugees. Shortly after the controversy, Pritzker's office declared that Chicago will receive an extra $30.25 million to assist with the needs of the city's newest residents. Alderman Jesse Fuentes joined Taylor in begging her colleagues not to get into arguments with one another, much to the glee of Republicans who have enjoyed the commotion created by their choice to send the migrants to Democratic-led cities like New York and Chicago. It is simple to sit in this room and be angry with one another but we shouldn't be angry, Fuentes remarked. Therefore, we must redirect our anguish and rage toward the underlying causes of the issue. Chicago and the White House According to two individuals who were on the call, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson met with senior White House officials and demanded that they act quickly to address a migrant crisis they felt was about to escalate in the Windy City. The two Democratic leaders and aides pushed for a conference call on short notice, during which they expressed concerns about Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott increasing the number of buses carrying migrants into the city. They contended that this could result in a doubling of the current number of migrants in the city, which is over 17,000, at a time when the city is known for its severe winters. 
Worst winter weather we've seen in a while, only hours away. More than 500 migrants are still waiting for shelter space in Chicago. Go off the streets as we head into winter, the state of Illinois will invest an additional 160 million. The mayor is putting on pause that city new policy that kicks migrants out of shelters after 60 days. Your facilities will no longer be used as emergency shelters for migrants. Some facilities will need maintenance as the city says the parks are no longer needed. They, those expected to leave shelters will receive multiple notices starting 45 days out leading up to their eviction date. Certainly not acceptable for the governor to continue to send people to the city of Chicago, but we're meeting the moment. Tom Perez, the director of intergovernmental relations for the White House, and Jeff Zients, the chief of staff, encouraged Chicago to emulate the best practices implemented in New York, where fresh initiatives have been established to assist immigrants in obtaining work permits. However, this did not allay the worries of Pritzker and Johnson, who had also watched as state and local officials in New York City struggled to deal with the influx of thousands of migrants. According to a copy of the letter obtained by CNN, Pritzker demanded that the federal government assume responsibility for a coordinated response at the border in a letter addressed to President Joe Biden. Local leaders around the nation have been more critical of the White House about the growing number of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border, highlighting the importance of the White House's relationships with Democratic allies across the nation. A governor who has been one of the president's strongest political allies and a vocal supporter of his re-election campaign is now becoming involved in the dispute over the immigration situation. It's also brewing in the city that will play host to the Democratic Convention the following year, an occasion that many involved already feel would serve as a draw for Republican governors to send even more migrants to the area. We can't continue at that rate for even a week from now, a source close to the Pritzker administration stated. They have to understand that we are about to snap. He also says the city is trying to move migrants out of the landing zone as quickly as possible to shelters. People believe that there is more information that's available than they're, they're looking for nothing. There were close to 400 people living on buses. Now that number has significantly gone down. Go back into the process again. This sounds like a terrible idea. No one in the state of Illinois in this country is questioning Mayor Brandon Johnson's commitment to this mission. Johnson was informed of the letter's contents, but chose not to sign it. Still, he supports the initiative. According to someone briefed, Johnson was so dissatisfied with the White House position that he had his own one-on-one -on -one follow up contact with Perez to emphasize the need for the federal government to do more. Johnson ended that meeting without feeling that aid was on the way. The Sunday chat was verified by a White House aide who described it as a productive conversation that is a part of continuous engagement, which includes funding totaling $46 million to Illinois and Chicago to support newly arriving migrants. The aide mentioned the administration's concerted efforts to strengthen border security and extend work permits for those who have already entered the country, as well as the fact that since May 12, 253,000 people have been repatriated to 152 countries, as opposed to 180,000 during the same period in 2019, when the Trump administration was in office. The administration has been taking action without the help of Congress, Angelo Fernandez Hernandez, a spokesman for the White House, said. House Republicans are still resisting the necessary reforms to the immigration system, and the $4 billion we asked to meet DHS's urgent requirements in order to maintain the southwest border in a humane and safe manner and assist communities around the nation. We will keep up our strong collaboration with Illinois as well as other states, cities, and regions nationwide. Beatrice Ponce de Leon, the deputy mayor for Immigrant, Migrant, and Refugee Rights in Chicago, reported that a record number of migrant buses arrived last week. While they wait to be placed in shelters, more than 2,900 migrants are residing on the floors of Chicago's airports and police stations. As the White House became aware of the anticipated wave of immigrants in the city, they became more concerned about Chicago, a person involved with the discussion said. Sources close to the meeting claim that Perez and Johnson met late last month to talk about the current state of immigration in Chicago for more than an hour. What if the federal government doesn't help you? 
Well, clearly they haven't thus far. What's important is that we really establish that this is a humanitarian crisis. Officials pledged their own support for the coalition's policy platform, which includes calls for immigrant health care and more funding. There's work that has to be done to build it out to make it suitable. That current policies are too detrimental to public safety. Major aide to the mayor, Jason Lee, told CNN that he believes the White House's top aides are aware of the severity of the crisis Chicago is facing. We're trying to figure out what are the ways we can work with the White House and the executive branch, knowing that it's not sufficient, but we don't want to turn away or miss support that is there, Lee said. It's a fact that the federal government hasn't matched us dollar for dollar in terms of resources. They've given us some funding, but not enough for the issues we're facing, Lee stated. There is a correlation between the rise in border crossings and the growth of arrivals to U.S. cities. According to a Homeland Security official, Border Patrol arrested over 200,000 illegal migrants in September, the greatest number this year, and highlighting the persistent difficulties facing the Biden administration in the face of widespread migration to the area. When migrants are caught at the border, they may be detained, given the option of a speedy deportation process, allowed to return to Mexico, or released while they await further immigration proceedings. Due to tense diplomatic relations, a significant portion of border crossers are Venezuelans, whom the U.S. is typically unable to deport. Although Mexico has consented to accept some, the administration and the cities that will be receiving them still face a difficult and singular issue. Additionally, Abbott has not consulted with states or local governments when busing migrants to locations outside of Texas, which has made it more difficult for those who are receiving migrants and sparked demands for federal intervention. In his letter to the White House, Pritzker stated that a single office with an identified leader must be assigned to work for the cities and states across the silos of government to manage the challenges we all face. Pritzker contended that this isn't about inciting anti-immigrant sentiment. Rather, it's about a state and city that have been left on their own. Pritzker stated in the letter that we believe in the fundamental right of every human, especially those facing persecution, to find refuge and live with dignity in this great country of ours. Unfortunately, the federal government has not offered the same kind of help as Illinois has been offering to these asylum seekers. Most importantly, he continued, Illinois is now in an untenable situation as a result of the federal government's lack of coordination and intervention at the border. We're quickly running out of money, the Pritzker administration insider continued. Band-Aid solutions are what we've got so far we need to stop the problem's progression. As I said, you know, I've, I've worked with the governor and the mayor to try to meet the challenges of the new arrivals since August of 2022. Something that we've been looking at is how to really get more mandated reporting from the government as they're making decisions. Then there's an opportunity for them to return to the beginning process. Says he will ask them if they can possibly take some migrants in, even he says if it's as few as... The alderman, he held a meeting here in Greektown discussing this move that these uh, migrants are actually going to officially come in. Communities that are receiving migrants have received millions of funds from the Department of Homeland Security. The agency acknowledged the financial burden on communities when it announced an increase in financing of $12 million. Referring to the funds from the Shelter and Services Program, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas stated in a statement that SSP grants have provided critical support to communities receiving migrants and the need for this support is ongoing. Democratic Mayor of New York City Eric Adams has remained vehemently opposed despite one of his requested changes, which makes it easier for Venezuelan nationals to obtain work permits having been approved by the government. One of his closest advisors at City Hall, Ingrid Lewis Martin, stated over the weekend in an interview with the local New York television station, WPIX, we need the federal government, the Congress, the Senate, and the President to do their job, close the borders. He is traveling to Latin America to raise awareness of the situation. Pritzker and Johnson did not go that far, but they did not accept that New York was doing a good job of handling things. Pritzker demanded in his letter a number of additional specific actions, such as a major uptick in the data collection and logistical planning for individuals once they reach the nation, increasing funding for cities and states to offer social services like housing, and the state's applications 
for federal assistance like Medicaid to be waived. After CBP releases migrants into the nation's interior, the federal government must cease evading its duties. Pritzker wrote, Your administration has the ability, means, and legal remedy to do this immediately. Currently, Illinoisians are carrying out for the entire nation the obligations to care for the huddled masses yearning to be free, who are so desperately in need of assistance, Pritzker continued. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.